So again, $25 of Bitcoin and Bitcoin price is going up, 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 up. Right. Oh. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't win. <laughs> don't forget go over to facebook now share this stream between now and friday at 4 30 the person who shares it the most shares the stream the most wins 25 dollars worth of bitcoin so thank you so much for that um i'm gonna get started by saying we know if it's wednesday it is a blockchain day welcome to blockchain chat I'm Cherie, founder of Black Blockchain Consultants. Our mission is to help you take advantage of this $3.1 trillion industry. We wanna introduce a million black people to blockchain and help us find blockchain jobs, start blockchain-based businesses, uh, invest in the blockchain, whether you're investing time or money in a blockchain project, and help you have a foundation for generational wealth using this industry. So um, before I uh, introduce my great panel here, because we've got very interesting topic of the day talking about Ripple and the fact that Ripple may be the first blockchain, I consider blockchain platform IPO. So um, I know T-Zero did some things, but Overstock was already public. So I'm considering this kind of the first. Mm -hmm. But before we get to the panel, couple of announcements for you. Number one, if you are um, if you are interested in taking our blockchain courses, especially our blockchain 101 course, which is gives you all the terminology, verbiage you need to use, and most importantly, talks about it from our perspective, you can go to blockchainstudies.tech. That's not the only course that's there. There are all sorts of courses there, including um, blockchain and healthcare, blockchain and cybersecurity, how to start a six-figure blockchain consulting business, et cetera, et cetera. So that's blockchainstudies.tech. Also, um, book club is happening on uh, next Monday, the 24th. And you can see here, your girl is like <laughs> less than halfway through the book. That's a reading to do. So we've got some serious reading to do. But this is the book that we are going to be reading. It is for Inner Circle members only. It's The Real Business of Blockchain. You can still get it on Amazon. It came to me within one day, so you can still take your weekend and read it. If you're an Inner Circle member, you will get the link um, probably on Friday and again on Monday in order to come in. If you're not an Inner Circle member, it's a great time to join because we're going to be talking about this book from our point of view. And it's very good because this book is telling executives who are making the decisions in the C-suite why they should consider blockchain and when to use those blockchain projects. So if you wanna be a blockchain generalist, especially, this is a great book for you to get because they did a great job of articulating to C-suite executives when is the right time to use blockchain when they shouldn't use blockchain, why they should consider it, what the future is, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are not reading this book and you tell me you wanna be a blockchain generalist, I'm not gonna believe you. So love you much though, all right? <laughs> Tawana looked like that was harsh. <laughs> He's not gonna believe you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah, you, you all know me. I love you, but sometimes you just gotta, you gotta be hard with it. You gotta tell the truth. So tell the truth and shame the devil, old Southern saying, right? <laughs> okay then. So with that, uh, we have our great panel here. I'm gonna let everyone introduce themselves. First is Tawana. Oh, Tawana Rivers, um, COO of BCI, um, and excited to talk about this opportunity for Ripple, um, both the business side, the tech side, from a cryptocurrency standpoint, this is a, this is a very wide topic that we're going to cover today, because I, I want to hit it from all angles. Yes. Talisha? I am Talisha Shine. I am the VP of Blockchain Consortium International. I am the, the tech person here. So yes, when we talk about it from the tech perspective, I have uh, some ideas and thoughts about that. So it may, it may run Parallel, it may run slowly <laughs> against, I don't know. So we'll see how this goes tonight. Okay. And Eric. 
Uh, yes, Eric Spence, uh, president of BCI. Uh, happy to be meeting, every, you know, here with everyone on this frigid Wednesday <laughs> night. <laughs> They're talking about we got snow coming in tomorrow, so. You're serious? Uh, don't say that word. We don't, we don't say that. We don't talk about okay, that. Okay, well, I'm not going to look at the app on the phone. Exactly. Don't look at it. It don't happen. It's not okay. there. It's not on the internet. All right. I had no Let's idea it was supposed to snow. Oh, my gosh. See, you're saying it again. We just okay, said I had no idea it wasn't supposed to snow. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Well, you know what? It is what it is. So, um, uh, so again, if you just joined, $25 of Bitcoin we're giving away. How can you enter? Anybody can enter to win. You don't have to be an Inner Circle member. All you need to do is go to Facebook. We are streaming live now on our BBC Facebook channel. Share it. Don't close out of Zoom in order to do it, but just go to, go to Facebook. Share between now and Friday at 4.30, and whomever shares this stream the most will win $25 worth of Bitcoin, okay? So just putting that out there. Oh, All right, can, can, I'm sorry, can, can I just say one thing? Yes. Because we want to attract people, when you share it, do you mind letting them know that the opportunity to get free Bitcoin from, you know, uh, is, is there so that it can kind of, you know, be that hook that lure to bring in more traffic because we want more people joining and being come, you know, becoming a part of the conversation, a part of the community. Um, so yes, if you could, you know, when you share it, I just want to put that out there. Just let them know. Yes, there's an opportunity to get free Bitcoin by attending. So you know. can I yeah. add also to that is when yes. you can you please have the courtesy of telling the people you're sharing it with what you're sharing with them. Um, it's nothing worse than getting added to something and you have no idea what it is, right? So it'd be nice to, to let your friends and family know exactly what this group is, why you're sharing us with them, how important this is going to be for them to be a part of um, exploring a group like ours, even if it's just following the Facebook page and, and getting to know the topic and learning about the topic. I think that's gonna go a long way to help them in the future. Uh, and today's conversation will kind of lend to why that's really important. Um, so please, please explain it in addition to uh, telling them about the Bitcoin. <laughs> yes, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, so I uh, have something to share. I didn't tell the officers about this, but you guys just go with it. And this will be easy for us to talk about. Um, oh, I think this is it here. Okay, so there was an article that I saw earlier today. Uh, Amazon reveals high demand for Bitcoin blockchain related books. And we did post it uh, in our Facebook group as well as on Flock, but I wanted to bring it up tonight because basically the article is saying, hey, be, uh, you know, Amazon did an analysis there's a rising demand for people to become educated in blockchain. Therefore, one of the first things that they're doing is they are going to Amazon in order to get books about blockchain. So um, this is the article here, but you can get the gist of it. But I wanna say two things for people. Number one is we have uh, blockchain authors within BBC. So, this is the book by Rob Morton. So proud of him. It's called No More the Last to Know. It is specifically about Black people not being the last to know about the blockchain revolution and how blockchain affects us. We also have Jackie Hayes' book, yes. Blockchain Basics, the Teen Edition. This is also on Amazon. These books are on Amazon. So please... Please, if you want to support our BBC members as well as get information from our point of view, here you go. The third book by BBC member Eric Guthrie, Blockchain or Die. This is also on Amazon as well. Now, this is a general book, not necessarily from our point of view, but these books are available. I also want to point out before 
I toss it over to the rest of the group here. Because somebody asked, well, how, Cherie, can you help me write a, a, a book? I'm like, no. Um, I've already written my book. I'm not writing any more books. But on YouTube, we did uh, a, an interview with Linda Griffin, how to write a blockchain book or ebook in 90 days or less. It was an excellent interview. And I believe Jackie was the one that uh, uh, used Linda in order to write her book. Yeah, Rob so, used her as well. I'm sorry? Rob used her as well. Rob used her as well, right. So uh, Linda is really great if you've never written a book before and walking you through the process from how to organize your thoughts, how to uh, create it, write it, edit it, self-publish, put it on Amazon, put it on other places, get it marketed, et cetera. Actually, she's a marketing person by trade. So um, at the very least, go back and watch this interview. Yes, my hair looks different. My hair always looks different. You can know <laughs> whatever great. we're in by Cherie's hair. Um, but this is a great interview that you can go back and watch if you want to write a blockchain book because right now blockchain education is the big thing i got a call yesterday i uh, talked to talisha about it from a person who said sheree i've got this university very well-known university they're looking for a blockchain professor professor do you want the job so a lot of um a lot of things are happening with blockchain education Got another um, contact from GBA, Government Blockchain Association. They are trying to educate 100,000 software developers to get into blockchain. I think it's software developers. Yes. I was offered that as well. Hey, you want to come in? You can you know, put together the course curriculum. I'm telling you right now, if you want to make money, education within blockchain is it's, it's what's paying right now. So I'm just letting people know about these opportunities. It, when they're appropriate, I pass them on to people just because I have a full plate. Um, but one of the best things you can do is start networking in your local areas with other blockchain professionals. Opportunities will fall in your lap. Really, really will. I get them at least three, four times a month and I don't even do as much networking as I could do. So um, I'm gonna open it up to the panel with regards to you know, the blockchain books, blockchain education, all the things that I've, I've said. Can I just add one thing that I wanna say, and you're, you guys hear me say it's a lot, is I talk about bringing your full humanity into the space. And I mean that, it's, this is really important because in, with Web 3.0, this is an opportunity for us to create things in the way that we believe and we feel is going to best serve ourselves and our community. Um, and that means you completely bring in all of yourselves and your whole perspective into the space. I know for Rob Morton's book, that's probably the only blockchain book you're ever going to find that has quotes in there from Dr. Amos Wilson. I, I mean, and, and, and that was like, you know, really, really standing out to me of going, Wow, you know, in, in those are the kind of unique uh, nuances and perspectives that I think um, are really important to, you know, when you enter into the space and you're thinking about a book. Look at what you're looking at, you know, think about yourself and what matters to you and things and problems that you have been, you've identified and you believe blockchain could be a solution for and then begin to orient, you know, you know orient yourself that as, you're, you know, as you're creating it, so. Yeah, I want to I want to piggyback on that. If you are the blockchain and healthcare specialist, or the blockchain and healthcare insurance specialist, write the book on that. So Rob's book just and this is not a diss to him. This is just showing you it's this thick. Yes, Eric's book is this thick. He just happened to have a lot more to say, but it's this thick. I was making six figures writing business plans with a book that was just a little bit thicker than this. It doesn't have to be overly complicated and huge. It just needs to relay 
the information to let people know that you are the person that they should come to when they're ready for implementation or whatever it is that, that you want to, um, you know, to do with them. So Tawana and Talisha, anything else with regards to offering? You don't have to do a formalized. I think a lot of people think education means, oh, I have to get some level of credential and I have to have this. You can actually, you know, educate from a small perspective, you know, there's meetups and things of that nature just to kind of get the conversation started. I don't think you have to be, you know, an expert. That's a, a very kind of ubiquitous term. None of us are experts. I mean, there's some of us that know a lot more, but again, it's when you entered the space and there's always somebody behind you that doesn't know anything. So the level of education that you have is well adequate for the, to be able to disseminate to other people who do not know anything and give them a nice framework and start them just be cautious of what you're educating them on i think that's also again don't just you know kind of spark the whole thing because i get the conspiracy theories and all this other stuff of what it is and what it's not so then you have to unlearn so kind of start from the from the very basics and make sure you utilize resources such as the BBC because we have all those things there for you. You can go to the Facebook page and say, hey, I wanna learn a little bit more about this or the shared article. Those are the kind of things that education truly starts with. So it's not only just writing a book and doing a, a full lecture, it is actually just educating your community where they are and giving them the resources to begin the conversation. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, I'll just add, you know, for anyone who's reluctant and just unsure about if they're able to, I would just say the same thing I always say, be brave, right? Mm -hmm. don't, don't second guess yourself. You won't know until you try it. Um, we've given you a wonderful resource. Sheree reposted the Linda video in our chat in our uh, Black Blockchain Consultants Facebook group. So, you know, go to that YouTube video, listen to what Linda has to say, understand the process and then just write the first few pages and see what happens from there, right? Make a goal to write a page a day or two pages a day. And if it feels right, continue. You know, if it doesn't, regroup, figure out what, what, what do you want to do instead and, and then do that, but do something. Yes. So I want to shout out to Kareem who says, uh, I'm a software developer and I've already guest lectured at TCNJ about blockchain. So I want to say fantastic. So proud of you. Keep it up. Uh, Maurice is saying, I'm seeing so many opportunities and career paths right now. Just look at most credible banks, crypto exchanges, and other verticals. You're absolutely right. Um, so... Uh, oh, Adam is here. So Adam and Yang is going to be our guest next week. Uh, he was referred to me by Linda Getz. Mm -hmm. I've, I've got it right this time. <laughs> yes. uh, from the Blockchain Chamber of Commerce. She was our guest last week. So if you missed last week's Blockchain Chat, uh, it's on our YouTube page. But uh, Adam is here. And hopefully, Adam, we will see you next week very much a crypto enthusiast, very much looking forward to you being here with us next week. Uh, Karine is asking about how many pages should we shoot for? I hate to answer the question like that because as someone who used to write business plans and people would say, well, how many pages are you going to write for me? It needs to be enough pages to convey that you know what you're talking about and that you're the right person that the person should call when they need to do X, whatever X is. So I, I really am hesitant to answer that question. I would say just write, and you'll actually be surprised once you get into it, how much you know about a topic and how much information um, you can place in there. Once you start researching, putting it into your own words, you know, and, and writing it up. Um, so I would say this may be a good idea. I know anthologies are really popular. So you don't have to be responsible for the whole book. You have to just be responsible for a chapter. That may be something that, again, we have all these resources here in the BBC. Maybe everybody take a use case, something that's really personal to them. Mm -hmm. They can add their own, like, this is, this is my passion and this is where blockchain, you know, be that link in the chain and where everybody's link is, is different because they have a different perspective, they have a different passion, and that could be a full book. And you don't have to, again, worry about pages because everybody's contributing to, uh, to, the, to the material. 
Yeah, and I mean, I always say that think about blockchain in terms of you can tackle it from an industry point of view, or you could tackle it from a specific problem point of view, you know, so um, think, thinking about it in terms of that as you're putting an, an anthology together and who comes before you, who comes uh, after you in order to solve that problem or, or in order to work within that industry. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to now start with our topic of the day, which is a ripple, ripple. Okay, so this is according to the block crypto.com. Ripple's IPO could come within 12 months suggests the CEO. Now this was from January, 2020. So sometime this year, Brad Garlinghouse, who is the CEO of Ripple, has indicated that the firm could go public. Speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos, that's where all the rich people hang out. Uh, Garlinghouse told the Wall Street Journal on Thursday that an initial public offering is a natural evolution for the company. So I'm gonna stop right there and um, say, say something here for people who don't know. With uh, companies that raise capital, and Ripple was one of them that raised capital, they're gonna talk about how much they're raising. Venture capitalists want to cash out eventually. Now it's interesting that Ripple is cashing out so soon, but they wanna cash out eventually. There are two ways they can cash out. Number one, the company could be acquired. Or number two, they could go through this IPO and start selling stocks on the um, on uh, either NASDAQ or um, New York Stock Exchange or any of the stock exchanges that are out there. So they're choosing to potentially do an IPO uh, and be the big fish uh, in order to, to cash their investors out, their early investors out. So in the next 12 months, you'll see IPOs in the crypto blockchain space. We're not going to be the first and we're not going to be the last, but I expect us to be on the leading side. It's a natural evolution for our company, said the CEO. Just last month, Ripple raised a whopping $200 million in Series C funding, which is usually the last step before a company goes public. The Series C round valued the blockchain payments firm at $10 billion. Ripple has raised a total of $293 million in funding to date, according to Crunchbase. It remains to be seen how much more Ripple ends up raising in an IPO. So that's another good point. They can raise more money uh, through the IPO process as well, not only cash out their previous investors. Um, so earlier this week, Ripple reported sales figures of XRP for the fourth quarter and saw an 80% drop. The firm sold a total of 13 million in XRP in Q4, compared to 66 million in the previous quarter. The Q4 sales figures are the lowest in the past three years, according to the Block's research. Um, Cumulatively, Ripple has so far sold a total of $1.22 billion worth of XRP. This is according to their research. So this is the end of this article here. I'm going to go to, um, actually, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop and let my panel uh, respond with regards to this. Okay, okay can I? I, let me just say this. All right. <laughs> so, you know, honestly, I want to jump in. To no, go it. ahead, because I know I'm what gonna... you're saying. Go ahead. All right. First of all, Sheree, I'm going to give you props. Because you called this. You called this a couple years <laughs> ago. <laughs> <laughs> you called this a couple years ago. <laughs> and I remember this primarily, right, with the investor group. And you were like, uh, you know what? I'm not sure about these tokens. I'm much more interested probably in you know, owning the shares of the company and, and equity in some of these companies because eventually they're going to go public. And here we are. Um, I'm going to ask a question. And for those who are here, if you could type it into the chat, just what you're thinking. Do you think, is this going to be a, and you can say either yes, it will, yes or no. 
how do you think this is going to affect the token price mm. when this happens? Is it going to go up or down? If you could type it in chat, like what I would love to get a consensus of kind of what people are thinking. If they think this is going to have a positive effect on the token price, or if it's going to cause a just a huge dump on it. All right. So let let's see some of the comments coming in. Uh, Adam is saying, "I pray it tanks." Talisha is saying, "No." So not it's going to tank is what Talisha saying as well. Anybody else want to respond? Uh, I hope increase but i think it's gonna dump tangy <laughs> is saying going up she thinks it's gonna go up See. anybody else that's mm. so i will say what typically happens i will say what typically happens is and this happened with facebook you guys can go and research it it typically drops just after the ipo well at least the, the stock price does and then over time it it increases dramatically. Um, I think for XRP, it depends on, we're gonna talk about some of the uses that Ripple is gonna be used for with regards to the banks and gaming and um, the issue with MoneyGram that Tawana actually pointed out to me. It depends, I think, it depends on if XRP, or so Ripple, it depends on if Ripple pivots from using XRP in order to power it or not, in my opinion. Mm. So, um, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the opposite of that mm -hmm. from a tech perspective. What happens is the token is again, a viability. It's just an application to their entire business process. Because again, they have other, business areas that they are now working for so again with this is where we have to separate the company from the application from also their token there's tiers to it and with again their ipo is going to hit if in fact they do do it that increases their viability as a company to give them basically wiggle room from you know a spreadsheet kind of thing from their balance sheet gives them a lot of flexibility to gain partnerships to buy companies which again this is something that you spoke about sheree is that big conglomerates trying to buy they need that cash on hand to truly start to buy up everybody and that's the trick so it's going to be like the you know look over here this is what we're doing xrp will probably level out or even you know go down maybe significantly but just go down because again nobody's using it until they find the right application to then trigger with those companies that they bought to force them to use xrp so then it will take that boom right up because now they're saying okay now we've acquired you you will have to use us moneygram did a bait and switch with them which they are they now certainly did we're going to yeah, talk they did about a bait and switch and they knew they were going to do it so they yeah. they had they had language around what was going if you see what was happening you could have called that very clearly it was the same thing that that the the languaging of what we're doing and what platform we choose just because you invest in us doesn't mean that you give us the right to decide what platform is viable for us and they had already had the visa platform well in advance so that was maybe a misstep or maybe it, it has something to come later, but we're seeing that now. But I think that's where the whole, it, this is one of those kind of things where it takes a little, it's going to be cyclical. They're going to buy somebody, they're going to make them use the platform and make them use XRP, and then you're going to see a rise and it's just going to keep continuing with that. But they need that influx of cash in order to do that. Yeah, where it gets tricky also though is, XRP doesn't necessarily have to be the payment protocol, right? Correct. Does not. There are other currencies that can that do the same thing. So there's, you know, while we we hope they they use XRP in the future plan, that that's not guaranteed. And and you know, I I just want to share. I'm very fond of Ripple. It is the very first cryptocurrency I purchased oh. in 2017. I was eager. I'm gonna buy some crypto. And it, Ripple was my first purchase. <laughs> I bought a lot of it. And so I'm hoping. <laughs> Hold on to it. You, you may have to put a stop loss on your, on your account. <laughs> Don't worry. I know. So that's how I feel about Factum. So I know how it is to have that favorite crypto coin that you have. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be interesting. But you're right. It's about the money. And when we, we see the number, what was the number? Like, Two hundred billion dollars. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to buy up everyone else, that's not enough money, right? 
so so you need more. I mean, it sounds like a lie. I mean, it is a lie. But if you want to if you want to really be the big fish, then you need more than that. And this IPO is going to open up a whole different world to Ripple. I mean, it really is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that Ripple is going for being um, one of the big fish mm -hmm. in this pond. So. Uh, so yeah, so and and thank you, Eric, for the compliment. I will pat myself on the back, you know, uh, very much <laughs> <laughs> with regards to that. But it really, um, this IPO just, you know, points out to us that owning the crypto is not enough. We have to figure out a way to get into the door you know, early on, because that's, that's where a lot of the riches are happening, um, are, you know, are the people that are able to get in early on. So, um, well, let's move on to the second article here, which is about Ripple leading the gaming revolution. So, um, Blockchain gaming is still in a nascent stage compared to other digital asset classes. However, Ripple is transforming the way blockchain gaming is perceived across various sectors. XRP is well known for its prowess in the cross-border transaction arena. Now Ripple is powering many leading blockchain gaming brands. Lee Ju Hyuk of SBI says that Ripple is at the forefront of this emerging industry. The investment arm of Ripple which is Xpring, or Xpring, collaborated with Fort Gaming Firm in 2019 to promote the blockchain gaming realm. The collaboration featured a $100 million fund that will help both the partners develop and support innovations in the gaming arena. Supertree funding round to boost blockchain gaming. So the recently concluded Series A funding round of Supertree fetched $62.7 million. Supertree, the leading name in the blockchain gaming industry, is on a high after this latest funding round that will surely help it ramp up its research and development operations. Supertree's PlayDap is now hugely popular in the gaming niche. Which new, uh, sorry, with new funds in its kitty, it will aim to buy intellectual property rights of more such gains. Supertree's major investment partners includes Korea Investment Partners and the Korean division of SBI. Lee Ju Hyuk of SBI Korea shares that Supertree will rise in terms of valuation in the future. Lee Ju Hyuk of SBI Korea mentions that blockchain adoption in gaming will see an exponential rise and Ripple will be at the epicenter of this upcoming revolution. In March 2019, Ripple raised $100 million only to promote the blockchain gaming industry through Fort and other prominent names. The blockchain powered games are slowly but steadily increasing in size and stature with well-heeled players like Supertree and Fort powering innovative standards. The sector is set for stupendous growth. Tron Arcade launched in 2018, also focused on garnering maximum publicity for uh, blockchain gaming. Ubisoft and Ultra blockchain collaboration have similar objectives. Decentralized gaming is undoubtedly an appealing concept in today's privacy bereft arcade industry. So um, this is one of Ripple's wins thus far. They are really going heavy into, uh, into gaming. And we're seeing it with Fort thus far, which is, I guess, Fortnite. Um, and we're also seeing it with this other SBI company where they just raised $62 million. One of my thoughts with this is that they're trying to get people when they're young. So think about Facebook, you know, young people tend to gravitate to, to technology faster. They tend to, um, uh, tend to share it. Things tend to go viral. And then the rest of us, People with salt and pepper hair, we catch on, you know, years later. So I wonder if part of this bet is that they, you know, they want to focus on a couple of industries where they can get this kind of viral um, use case 
happening and gaming can be one of those things. Another thing is I did a business plan for a company who is in esports. And one of the issues that was happening in esports is uh, they would hold these big tournaments. Esports would have big tournaments. And somebody would say, okay, we've got a prize of a million dollars for whomever the winner is. And these kids would come from all over the place. They would compete. And then when it was time for the prize money to be delivered, the person would vanish. Mm -hmm. It's a huge issue within esports. And one of the ways that um, the players are kind of rebelling back is saying, no, we want crypto. And we want it um, either released with a smart contract right. or we want it you know, held in escrow somewhere um, so that we don't get cheated out of our winnings. So um, those are a couple of things that I was thinking. I will pass it off to the panel though, with regards to this. I'm gonna say this is, this is where the tech part comes really in. And yes, Adam, I agree, Cardano was supposed to be this. This was their, their area of expertise and they missed the ball. They really, really missed it right here. I think just like Microsoft wanted to have Google on every part of its uh, operating system, this is where Ripple decided that they could take a stronghold. It's like, if you have this platform, and again, it's not so much the token, it's the undercurrent platform. If you use this platform, it makes it very difficult to go jump ship. So then you have to play games that intrinsically are on the same platform. You use more of it. And again, games are much more those kind of things. People have a lot of loyalty to certain games and they play them religiously. So it's not so much even um, a generational aspect. It's the loyalty and the customer experience. But if you're on something and you're using it, you have a harder time getting off of it. And like I said, it's like an operating system. It's the thing that comes with the operating system. This game is going to have this platform, you're going to use it. There is, there's not going to be a choice because you, you want to play the game. And that's how they're going to kind of seep in. And that truly will build, just build upon itself truly. When they say stupendous, that's where it is because that, that, that growth is incremental because as soon as that game is released, it's released nationwide and worldwide. You have that, again, that ability, if they even tie it to aspects of the game where you get rewards for it or you need to buy something in the game to kind of continue on they have something right there for you to use it just makes very a strong sense and everything has a synergy to it so i think that's a great uh, a ploy for ripple to come into the gaming industry yeah and i'll say you know i think ripple needs the 2019 pivot award because <laughs> if you i mean they do because if you think about ripple in 2019 i mean you, you had, I think, I think the SEC was investigating, is, it, is XRP a security, right? Yeah. You had the public debating if it was centralized or decentralized because they were in bed with the banks and everybody was mad at them. I mean, when you think about the year they had, they came out of that year and said, okay, let, let's rethink this thing, right? So you've got the, the gaming angle, you've got the, you know, let's make right with the SEC. And we've said this a million times, you can't move forward until you do that, right? because yeah. they're gonna come for you if you don't mm -hmm. and so let's 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 kiss and make up with the sec and tell them we're sorry and and now we're going to be, be doing an I, ipo i mean when you think about the strategizing that has taken place within that organization they they really deserve an award for it I'm, my hey, hands claps to, to ripple for the pivot I mean, they, that's they what get we have to do. I think that's a, a good aspect to it is that pivoting in this field right now, it's a dynamic field. You cannot just say I'm coming in and I'm just going to make a stronghold play and, and it's going to work my way. It's not. We have seen this with every single person who's come into this field. that This is not how it goes. So the ability to be very agile in this particular field and like you said, kind of make make good and kiss and make up and do whatever, but also to identify those areas where, like I said, that you can see and have longevity with. Like I said, the gaming industry is not going to go anywhere. It's growing. So why not hitch that wagon? <laughs> you know, like, let's go right on with you and create something that, again, has just that look and feel and just works very, very well together. And I think they have done an excellent job of being um, business agile. 
Um, all right. I got to throw some shade. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I love it. It's quiet, but it's too late. OK. Um, this headline is very misleading. Ripple's not going to lead the gaming revolution. No. I don't believe it. I'm sorry, but Ethereum, uh, Engine, Tron, to me, are already ahead of Ripple when it comes to this area. Even Ethereum, of even having, of even the, the NFT, and I'm talking about non-fungible tokens, mm -hmm. and having their own standard for those, which will absolutely work within the gaming industry, where now you're able to have these items, these in-game items, which have a uniqueness to them, and then you're able to sell them on the marketplace and that sort of thing. They're already ahead of them to me when it comes down to this. So, no, I appreciate the pivot, but I do think that this is a little bit of hopium here with this writer of trying to, you know, kind of push this where Ripple is going to lead it. No, I don't think they're going to lead it. That's just my take on it. And, you know, I remember when we had um, Alan Gorham um, from the Crypto Invest Summit. He, he spoke at one of our virtual conferences. And Alan was talking about how uh, with Farmville, um, everyone remembers the whole, the whole game, the whole online game, Farmville. And he was talking about how years ago, I forgot how, how long ago, it could have been that long, but um, how they sold more John Deere tractors. Um, they made more revenue selling John Deere tractors in the game than John Deere made. <laughs> so real tractors you can actually use. You know, so I, I, I mean that, like I look at things like that and I look at where Ethereum, where Engine, where Tron is, and to me, I, I'm just saying that, no, yeah, yeah. Ripple will, yes, this is a great pivot for them. Yes, they will have a space. I do not think one place is going to rule it all, but no, you're not gonna lead it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're not gonna lead it. No, it's not gonna happen for you, so. I think this is a case of, yes, we have competitors here. I always say, like, let's go back to history. We had MySpace before we had Facebook. You can do so much more with, with MySpace. You can customize. You were, you were coding and you didn't even know it when you were on MySpace. You know, <laughs> everybody was changing and loading songs and doing everything. But again, it became what became really popular and what everybody was using. And that's the key. And this is where the customer and the client will dictate to you what's going to be. You can do a whole lot of things. You can be ahead of the game. You can have all the bells and the whistles. If nobody uses you, you die. Somebody well, I was thinking if they make it, all they need to do is make a couple of real strategic moves and they could be, you know, leading again. So mm -hmm. uh, again, only time will tell yeah. uh, with these things, which is, you know, which is why I want to encourage us to kind of look at the landscape and figure out how we can be a little bit everywhere. And I don't mean buying crypto a little bit everywhere. I mean, you know, how can you make money no matter who rises to the top? Because one of the things that I believe, and this is just from me looking at social media, there's a guy that I used to follow named Grant Cardone. And every time a new social media would pop up, he would be on it. Like he would continue mastering YouTube, continue mastering Facebook. But then remember like Meerkat was popular, Periscope, yes. uh, like he would be the first one on it. And then when it fizzled out, it didn't matter because he was still, you know, no matter what's hot, you know, he's, he's in all of these platforms. So I think a part of it is us just figuring out how we can do the same thing within blockchain. Um, so I'm trying to be a good social media person. So I have to do my announcements again. $25 worth of Bitcoin we're giving away. How do you get the $25? If you go over to Facebook between now and Friday at 4.30 p.m. and share this live stream. Please, Tawana is asking correctly and Eric, like tell people what the live stream is about while you're sharing it. We are trying to, we are going to educate a million black people in blockchain and this is a way for us to do it. So if you share this stream, the person who shares the most, um, wins the $25 worth of Bitcoin. We're going to be doing this over a four-week period. Tim Cottrell won last week, so he is not eligible to win this week. So we're going to have a new winner for this week. But please do that. Also, on Monday, if you're an Inner Circle member, this book, The Real Business of Blockchain, is great for um, you to come 
to learn what's happening in the blockchain industry. And this book is speaking to people in the C-suite with regards to how to sell blockchain to C-suite individuals, whether it's a Fortune 500 company or an industry leader, et cetera. So if you wanna be a blockchain generous, generalist, if you wanna be Mr. or Miss Blockchain in your company, your job, then you want to attend um, this session. If you're not an Inner Circle member, no problem, come you on board. Can <laughs> All you have to do is come to blackblockchainconsultants.com, click on the membership button. It's $100 for the year, and we're going to be doing all sorts of um, discussions with regards to how to get your business up and running, how to get blockchain jobs, how to sell yourself, etc. So definitely join that. Um, and I, and actually, I'll, just, I'll just add a minute. Mm -hmm. If you think, if you guys watching think you get gems watching the Facebook live stream, you have no idea what's out there. The things that Cherie, the ideas Cherie gives away for free when we're in the inner circle doesn't even touch the idea she gives you for free when we're here live. <laughs> so that hundred dollars, when I tell you it's nothing, it's a drop in the bucket based on what you get in return. So I know people hear the hundred dollars, why are they charging? You know, half of that goes to the platform that we communicate mm -hmm. on. So yeah. nobody's getting rich off the hundred dollars. This is truly <laughs> about keeping the lights on and educating you guys. That's what the mission is. And that's what the priority is for this group. So when I tell you that's a hundred dollar investment in yourself, it's going to be better than any lottery ticket you can buy this month. Yes. So, so do it, consider it. And if you think that this book is great for February, next month, we have a guy that's coming to teach us how to start a tech company without being a coder. Talisha is going to be interviewing him. He's going to give you game with regards to how to negotiate with your coder in a way that protects you, protects your intellectual property, and gets them to stay through the duration of beta testing and getting it up and running. Like that, if you wanna start a blockchain platform or start any kind of a, a business, um, the $100 is worth it just to get that game. Uh, he's really good. So, um, you know, please join blackblockchainconsultants.com, hit the membership tab. Also, if you need training, we have our Blockchain 101 course. You can become a certified blockchain professional, blockchainstudies.tech. Blockchainstudies.tech is the website. There's all sorts of courses on there. We're going to encourage you to uh, look at that website, take as many courses as you would like to. Okay. All righty then. And the final Article we're going to go through. This is the shade. Uh, <laughs> even though Eric is already like shaded, <laughs> this is some real shade that happened here. I read this article. I was like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh -oh. It is an ouch. Exactly. Um, MoneyGram shuns Ripple in latest settlement product. MoneyGram. Uh, has pushed out a new service called Fastsend, but has elected for Visa, um, but it has elected for Visa over XRP. So this came out a couple of days ago as well. So in brief, MoneyGram has launched a new service called Fastsend. Fastsend will offer pay fast payments using the Visa network. Ripple's XRP won't be involved in the product. So they first start off talking about what happened. So money transfer service MoneyGram launched a speedy remittance service for its customers called Fastsend on Thursday, but it's missing something that will disappoint Ripple fans. It's missing XRP. According, according to Cointelegraph, the service will run using Visa, but not Ripple technology or its cryptocurrency XRP. Ripple is the financial services company that offers blockchain solutions for making fast cross-border payments. 
And if somebody can do me a favor, let me know how much money goes through MoneyGram on an annual basis. If somebody could do a quick Google search for me um, while we finish reading this article. Thank you. Uh, the weird part is that Ripple purchased a $50 million stake in MoneyGram in June. I wish somebody give me 50 million. But okay. <laughs> they gave them the $50 million on the premise that it would start uh, using XRP for cross-border transactions and remittance. You should have gotten that in writing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and money, well, think about it, y'all. Oh. Ripple raised $260 million, I think it said in that other article. That's like almost 25% that they gave to MoneyGram and MoneyGram shafted them. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is, oh, I shouldn't be laughing. Oh my gosh. Whew. That's like your cousin coming <laughs> over. Thank you. Sorry, buddy, you're not paying it back. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Let me get my composure here. <laughs> yeah, this is black blockchain consultants. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and MoneyGram has already started to use Ripple. Uh, in August, I think he meant to say had already started to use Ripple. In August, MoneyGram CEO Alex Holmes said on its quarterly earnings calls that MoneyGram had been making transactions on the XRapid platform. He added at the time that it had shown a number of benefits, particularly with the speed of transactions. But it appears that MoneyGram had other ideas. In September, it announced a new debit card deposit service with Visa. The service, which works with Visa's real-time payments platform, Visa Direct, makes it possible for MoneyGram customers to transfer money to over a billion Visa cards using MoneyGram, a billion, y'all. Um, and now we know that its latest product, Fasten, won't be using XRP, even though it's a product that would be suited for fast cross-border border payments. The service will allow MoneyGram customers to send money in real time without using a blockchain. It will run on Visa's uh, direct original credit transaction system. So again, shout out to Tawana for finding this and saying, no, we got to talk about this one too. Um, opening it up to the panel, I, I, I'm going to put myself on mute and laugh so, a harder. So again, this is the difference between a platform and, and the crypto. So that I said, like, this is where right. words become really important. They are using the X rapid platform. They may not be using it, you know, to, to issue that XRP, but it's there and they've used it in whatever environment it may be in. And it may be, we don't, again, we don't know what capacity. Is it connecting to the Visa platform? Is it using some kind of back end to it? Who knows? But it's obviously, it's somewhere in the mix. It's just not being used to issue that crypto. So that, that's really what that means. So again, it's like, yeah, it looks like, oh my God, you, you told me that you were going to use my stuff and you didn't. You are using some of it, but you're not using it to the fullest capacity. So that's where I want to make that distinction really clear because that to me is what grabbed me when I read the article. Like, yeah, you said you were going to use it, but you're not, but you're still, their platform is still somewhere in your system. Yeah, so I, I will piggyback on that. I think though, one of the issues is that there's still a middle person of Visa with this. Mm -hmm. So versus if uh, MoneyGram was doing business directly with Ripple, there would be no, no middle person, i.e. Visa, participating mm -hmm. in this. So I know that Visa is connected with Ripple. They were doing some business together. I have no idea if this fast send is using Ripple as an underlying platform or not. We could do some more research on that, but um, they're not going to get as much money as they thought they were mm -hmm. going to get. And how much money goes through MoneyGram? Did anyone find it? Oh, how much money per year? Oh, wait, hold on. Talisha, I got a question now. Right. <laughs> I need you to be, I need you to be sure here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. All right. <laughs> 
why didn't they use this before? So uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to wonder from a chicken or egg standpoint, mm -hmm. for Fast Send, did Fast Send come post the Ripple relationship? Or did Visa already have that? No, see, I think they had it like, they did not have this. Like this was something that they were working on and deciding whether, again, they had the business requirements, they knew they wanted to build such a product, but what the underlying technology hadn't been decided. So maybe somewhere in the acquisition, there was like, hey, we're building something. You can still give us some money because we're building something. But they may have just used that vague language. Like we didn't say we're going to use you. We just said we're building something. Yeah, so that may have been the the little loophole that they used or again they could be doing things in parallel because again most systems aren't run on one platform you have many different environments you have dev environments and environments so you you can be running all of these parallel and then what you want to go into production with is what you release but like i said there's somewhere that they're still using it because they definitely said like they they've used it they tested it and they saw that there was an efficiency there so somewhere it's there they're just not using it from a production standpoint and they chose to go with Visa, which like I said, I still think there's, there's, some, there's something missing here. There seems like there's a part of this picture that doesn't kind of all fit together. But from that standpoint, they're, if they're gonna go with Visa, that's fine. But at the same time, what's your back end? Where, where are you storing that data? And again, what are you doing? Maybe it's a private, maybe you know, XRapid has something connected to, to MoneyGram and Ripple that make their transactions to remit whatever they're doing with Visa. So there may be some kind of underlying thing going on, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't use it for what they thought, or maybe that's what the, the hope. And I think, I think that's the key. They didn't use it for what they thought, but, but Ripple's not a victim here. They made a $50 million investment. They got 10% of MoneyGram, I believe. They're getting that, that's their ownership. Mm -hmm. And they have all of MoneyGram's banking partnerships. Right. And so when you think about that, yeah, you're not using XRP, but mm -hmm. did I still get my money's worth? The answer to that is probably yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, while it is an ouch, you know, <laughs> it, I don't I don't think it's a loss for Ripple. It, it's again, it's another pivot. Right. It, it's another. Okay. Or maybe that was their plan all along. Like I said, maybe. That's you may be pushing your platform and that token may just be like I said, it's an application. You don't have to take the whole suite. I just want you to use my application. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's where we have to make those distinctions of what part are they selling? Were they just selling like, hey, use my token, use my token? They're probably not. They may be just saying this platform has the potential to do things. And we talk about this a lot here is that that's the infrastructure. Blockchain as an infrastructure, we can really decouple that from tokenization and cryptocurrency. It could just be used for certain aspects of their business. And again, having access to all the banking partners and saying, here, we've shown you this great efficiency. We have the test right here with your own people and your own stuff. Can you want to use this now? They probably will be very amenable to that. So again, that's why it may be, it's not a bait and switch maybe. It could be, but at the same time, it's like, what are they promoting, you know, promoting for their own business? And that may be their platform rather than that token. But, 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 but hold on, Felicia. Wait, wait a minute. Visa didn't have, Visa never had instant instant settlement before they, um, again they have they have a protocol that's available for that for transaction and remittance that has to be used in different environments correctly but they they've had that they've been building that for a while now mm -hmm. and again it's that it's debit cards it's not credit card so they, that distinction like again you can load the card reload it up that's what that that protocol is and that's everybody has it but now they're doing it from Re regular your regular credit card in a bank now they can hook those two together and do that remittance immediately so again it's just loading a debit card kind of thing so that's where it's kind of again it's real i would like to see the underlying thing obviously we're not going to see that but that's what to me it is is that they're using that and it's it's paralleling whatever x rapid is doing Got it. tangy makes a comment tangy said ripple went to MoneyGram because their main target the banks can't use them until regulation is present. Ripple needed to show that their platform can work with a major client. That's a very good point, Tammy. That is a good point. And they do about 350 million a quarter in mm. transactions. So it's like a billion dollars a year. Um, plus it would also, I think, help with the stress test of their blockchain mm -hmm. platform. Exactly, you the, need that um, large volume. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, there's, 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 there's they, just say, they got what they needed. Maybe it was just a test case. Maybe it's like, I just need you to stress test this for me. And they got their whole thing. And again, they have access to other people that may be utilizing it much more succinctly mm -hmm. than MoneyGram. They're like, if you got a bank to say, hey, I did this for MoneyGram, how you want to see it, how it works for you guys. Right. And there you go. And it just rolls right on over. So I think, like I said, it's not, I definitely don't think this was a, you know, a punch to the chin. I think they were probably like, oh, maybe we didn't discuss it as well, or we didn't put that provision in, but maybe that wasn't the plan at all. And they wanted just a, a platform utilization strategy. I don't know if I, I, I believe that, but you know, we can, yeah, we can no. <laughs> uh, agree to disagree tonight um, <laughs> with regards to that. I think putting $50 million into something, um, yeah, they out, out of their 260 that they raised, that that was a pretty that's, big bet. I, they, I find it hard to believe they would do that just for a use case. But that's how much they raised. Didn't the other article say they were worth 200 something billion? No, no, 10 billion. Valued at 10, 10 billion. billion. Okay. They're, they're expected to be valued at 10 billion, um, 10 billion. when the IPO happens. Okay. But Post value that is different than cash. Different than half. Yeah. yeah. So they raised, I think they said 260 million. Um, but okay, so I have an 8.30 that I'm late for. So um, <laughs> I, I'm gonna rush, rush all of you off the phone, uh, uh, off the Zoom here, but don't forget $25 worth of Bitcoin. If you go to Facebook, you share this uh, um, uh, blockchain chat between now and Friday at 4.30, you will be in the drawing share as much as possible. Congratulations again to Tim Cottrell, who won the first week. So you can win this week by going to Facebook and sharing the stream. We are going to hit our target. We are going to educate a million Black people in blockchain, but we need your help in order to do that. So please share and uh, enjoy your week. And I will see you all on Monday for our Inner Circle meeting, talking about the real business of blockchain, led by the titan of tokenization himself, Mr. Eric Spence. Looking All right. To it. Yes. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night. Good night.